Hi, I'm Lauren Prido, and this is The Pricing on the Cake. Hello, 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 queens, and welcome to The Pricing on the Cake, the podcast that's all about growing a profitable business with confidence and ease. My name is Courtney Rogers. I'm an award-winning business coach based here in sunny Brisbane, Australia. Today's episode is sponsored by Path to Profit. Path to Profit is my group coaching membership for women who want to move away from overwhelm and burnout to a place where their business gives them an awesome income and freedom. I'm very excited for today's episode because I'm joined by a good friend of mine and client, Lauren Prudeau. Lauren, thank you so much for being on the show with us today. I'm so happy to be here having a chat. Awesome, awesome. So I know that many of the listeners will know who you are, but for those who don't know who you are, Lauren, please tell us a bit about yourself and your business. Uh, Well, I am a Tasmanian and (laughs) I'm a mum of two. Yeah, I know in Brisbane, so I'm sweating my butt off half the time trying to um, figure out which amount of layers of clothing to wear um but yeah I'm a my therapist and I run a home practice um serving clients three days a week and I help them mostly with um physical pain amazing amazing I love that and I know that I had no idea what myotherapy was until I met you for those out there who don't know what myotherapy is and are probably sitting there going oh my gosh is this some intense medical thing tell us a little bit about what myotherapy actually is Okay, so I've actually struggled myself over the last few years <laughs> trying to work out what I actually do and where I fit into this yeah. world. So we, my therapy has its roots in remedial massage, uh, but uh, we actually are a little bit more qualified than that. We've got mm. a Bachelor of Health Science normally. Some people do um, an advanced diploma in myotherapy Uh, but it gives us we've got a greater depth of understanding of pathology and how the skeletal system works Mm. with the muscular system and all of the other systems in the body and so we take a a really holistic approach to pain and dysfunction so dysfunction might look like um a injury or something not quite working right or even just we look at things uh that are affected by daily life like you know having to hold your children on one side all the time Mm. or breastfeeding um and just you know the the aches and pains that you get from daily living Mm -hmm. yeah absolutely i think that's so so important you know especially as we get older and we notice different things like our body changing and parts of our body hurting that didn't hurt before and going, mm, mm. what's causing that? So, and having had a, a myotherapy massage session with you, I can absolutely say that it is so different to just having like a regular down the road massage in the sense that you do take a much more thorough approach to understanding the person's body, their history, you know, their medical status, all of those things. So I think that's really awesome. And I wish that more people knew about it. So I'm really, really glad to have you on the show today. And as I mentioned before, you know, you're a fellow women in women in business, women in business, woman in business. Uh, I'd love to hear more about your journey. I know that we've talked about it a bit, you know, in our sessions together, um, but I'd love for our audience to hear a little bit about, you know, what led you to start your business as a myotherapist and now as you go into feminine embodiment coaching, which is something that's not extremely new for you, but it's new to a lot of people. Um, So talk me through, you know, your journey coming in and starting a business. So I I started my business mainly because I just had this really, I had this grand idea that I'd have all this wonderful flexibility. And when I had a mom, (laughs) when I had children, that I wanted to be able to have that flexibility and working for myself. Um, And I knew that as a massage therapist, I could um, just work anywhere pretty much. And that has been the case. I've, you know, I started in Tassie, we then moved to Sydney for me to study musculoskeletal therapy. And I worked there and then, you know, it was quite transferable then uh, when we moved up to Brisbane. So that's why I started. Little did Mm -hmm. I know that there was so much, it was just the tip of the iceberg and all this other great stuff. (laughs) I'm still learning so much. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. What have been some of the things that you didn't expect as you grew your business, you know, over the first year or so? Hmm. Oh, just about everything (laughs) um that I think that there's one of the big things I think that 
especially women struggle with is the visibility that comes Mm. with having to show up and market yourself. It can feel quite icky. And so um, it's one thing to sort of put yourself forward as I've, I've sometimes worked for other clinics as well. So being the subcontractor or employee of another business, it's really easy to just, uh, you know, there's a set price and there's set policies and all that sort of stuff. And so I've then, when I've just purely worked for myself, Mm. had to decide, well, what is my policy on giving refunds or Mm. if someone doesn't like the service or um, that sort of thing, actually having to own and be responsible for like being the boss because yep. you can't just fall yep. back as an employee and say, oh, that's just a comp- company policy. Yeah, no, no, you've got to, you, th- there's so much more to think about. There's so much more responsibility. And I think that, you know, I share that in common with you as well. And I know, you know, dozens of other women who would say the same that going into business, you just don't realize like all the things you have to think about, all the things you need to set up um, and do. And while, you know, on the one hand, you do want to try and keep things simple, right? You don't want to overcomplicate things unnecessarily because that is just one of the fastest ways to send your business down the drain. But what you do want to do as well is try and keep things simple, try and keep it so that everything is aligned to what your strategy and what your goals are, right? Um, And I'd love to talk now about, you know, I mentioned before feminine embodiment coaching, which is something that we've chatted a, a little bit together Um, I think it's amazing. And, you know, as a very, very self-proclaimed feminist, I think that it's something that is going to be so, so powerful for so many women. Um, Please share with us what feminine embodiment coaching is and and how it helps women and how it empowers them. So it's a, it's a really tricky one to describe, to be honest with you, because it, it can look really differently to everyone, but feminine embodiment coaching aims to, uh, help illuminate parts of you that um, are often quite uncomfortable. Um, So you might be feeling a little bit stuck, say, in showing up in your business Mm. or or speaking up for yourself in a personal sense with your partner or in whatever intimate relationship. And what we do is we, we have a discussion first um, about what, what you, what you're struggling with. And then I, I listen for some key things, so um, some tension or some something that has a real, what we call a charge, mm. um, something that has some real emotion to it. Mm. And what I do is I use that to then experience in your body because often what we do in life is we, we, we experience something uncomfortable because perhaps of our conditioning or the culture and society mm. we live in and we've been squashed and, it's like, no, no, don't, don't feel that uncomfortable sensation or <sighs> don't express yourself in that way because the people mm-hmm. around us can't necessarily deal with it. And it's, it's not productive, of course. Yeah. So mm-hmm. yeah, during the embodiment process, we feel that in the body and it might be a tight chest or, or an, even a very clear ache um, in the knee or, or you know, a tight throat mm-hmm. or a frog in the throat. And that's where the magic is. And we experience that um, somatically. So yeah. that is, and, and we just, we experience it. We don't, we go into the session without any um, aim to fix that thing or okay. take away that experience, but we experience it more deeply to see what's underneath it. Mm-hmm. Um, and that is where the magic is in the embodiment session. So that's when we will inc- uncover the I'm scared to speak up for myself or yeah. I don't feel good enough, um, those those really tender parts of us. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. I think this is so fucking powerful, especially for women, because, you know, we are socialised to not express those you know deep parts of ourselves like deep pain or deep discomfort or deep fear you know we're told to not be too loud not be too bossy don't take up space don't talk over your man like all the all these sorts of bullshit things right Mm. we're socialized and and like you said you know those those things get squashed and our patriarchal society says no no don't don't share that that's too much that's too much you're taking up too much emotional space you you know you're being too loud like no one wants to hear it it makes people uncomfortable and it really invalidates your right to express yourself but also to just feel your way through life right and that is so so wrong because I think it violates a person's autonomy 
right? And I think that, you know, as women, because we're shamed for being, you know, having more emotions or having more deep emotions, we never actually get to fully express them or feel them, as you say, right? And so I'd love to talk now about, you know, why is it beneficial for women to feel those deep things that they might be feeling, especially in their business sense? So if if there are women out there who, you know, a lot of the listeners here are women in business, why would it be beneficial for them to like fully embrace and actually experience those deep feelings that maybe they don't want to deal with on a day-to-day basis? Well, it, it can be really powerful because you, once first you, you name it, you're able to actually just be honest with yourself and go, well, this is why I'm not showing up in business or this is why I'm not mm-hmm. able to place a boundary with this person. And it can be so transformative in business. I have, uh, to give a really tangible um, example, Mm. is something that I've been experiencing over the last two years is uh, working on my boundaries um, and working that, um, having practice at setting boundaries and then acting upon them and actually expressing them and then once you, this is a really slow process, right? With the embodiment mm. coaching is you, you sort of, it's like a real titration of, mm. you know, um, having a little taste test of what it might, what it might feel like. And mm. then the more you practice that, the more you actually just feel it in your bones. Wow. Of this okay. is where it turns into not, not a boundary anymore. It's not a healthy boundary anymore. It is just, it is purely your own personal power. Yeah. Um, and you feel it. So that has been my experience where recently I had um, someone cancel on me in the, on the last minute. And this is, uh, you know, a month to month job that had, had been cancelled due to um, COVID, but then it had been resumed. And then they tried it on me. Um, <laughs> and they tried to cancel. And I had this guttural reaction of like, mm. no. That's I, not okay. Yeah, that mm. is not okay. And normally, you know, say even a few months ago, mm. I would have just said, oh, okay, I'll just mm. start up You'd again. Let it go. Yeah. Let it go, you know, don't rock the boat. Yeah, um, yeah, don't upset anyone. Yeah. Don't. But, know. yep, oh, good girl, Lauren. <laughs> is um you know she's still a work in progress but I was able to come back and say well actually no I had set aside this afternoon for this job yeah and whether I go or not I'm going to be invoicing you yeah yeah and I almost surprised myself I didn't have to work hard at having that conversation with that person I just That's knew awesome. it in my bones that yeah. that was what I deserved yeah absolutely so that is the that is a transformation that is possible for mm. us when we when we feel that and really really experience it because it can move when we and that is what we do in an embodiment session is we experience that uncomfortable sensation we breathe we move and we feel it and bring awareness to that area of the body yeah and then when you feel it and name it and express it it can change it won't change overnight. It, it'll be a gradual process, but eventually you'll realise, oh, that's that's no longer there anymore. That is, oh, God, even just that story there, like, said shivers down my spine. Like, that is just so awesome. And I know I've said to you recently, like, I have noticed such an up level in, in energy and, you know, like you said, like not just boundaries, but like just your nature in general has grown and strengthened so much recently. Um, and I notice it in others who do this type of inner work, right? And I think it's something that we really underestimate quite a lot as business owners because a lot of us tend to be very practical. We like tangible things, right? The idea of just having a session to feel our feelings seems like unproductive. And it's like, why would I do that? How could that possibly help me? But when you actually look at the results and you see that, no, when you have a session like this and you're able to practice feeling things within yourself, owning it, accepting it, naming it for what it is, getting really clear on who you are, getting clear on your values and your, um, your what your boundaries are, 
you are going to become so much more at ease when you need to have difficult conversations. You're going to have the confidence and the boldness to be able to stand up for yourself and to be able to say things like, no, that's not okay. No, I'm not just going to stay silent because it's the, you know, it feels like the society, socially acceptable thing to do, mm. right? You are basically paving the way for women to be the confident strong versions of themselves that they want to be right and this doesn't mean that every woman just wants to be like a loud crazy woman or anything like that right what we're talking about is a really healthy sense of self self power as you said before and a healthy sense of confidence which i think every woman is entitled to right and so i think that the work that you're doing in this space is just fucking phenomenal lauren honestly i think that you're doing an awesome awesome thing an awesome awesome thing um And I'd love to ask you as well, you know, what have been some of the, maybe like your top three business lessons that you would impart on someone who's pretty early on in their business journey? Mm. I think first one would be, be aware of the people around you that maybe don't get your vision or don't quite understand. Um, So I've been um, perturbed, you know, by other professionals in the realm of of my therapy uh where they've just had a completely different direction and different um, thought process and strategy with their own business and were actually quite disillusioned by the by the industry and i allowed them to influence um how i showed up and what i did Mm. in my business so i would be aware and as well you know people like um family and friends who are of course well-meaning um (laughs) giving advice and that sort sort of thing um (laughs) you know, stay true to your vision and and what you would really like to create and seek people. Um, That would be the second one. Seek support um, when required. And it doesn't always have to be paid. You know, there are online networks that you can tap into or community groups or a local, you know, for example, you might find a mentor in your industry that you can reach out to and say, hey, can I just spend half a day with you and just shadow you? Um, especially if you're new I did that a few times and hung out with a chiropractor and I hung out with another myotherapist um, Mm. down in Sydney and just shadowed them um, just to see what they did it's awesome yeah Um, so yeah find yeah and find that find that support so you can um, yeah settle into the industry (laughs) that you're in Um, I don't know about the third one trust yourself Mm, you know that's a good one yeah look everyone's got their own special source you know their special thing that they add you know um I've only just you know after 13 years as a massage therapist and now myotherapist um recognizing my niche and Mm -hmm. that I I don't necessarily work with the high high performing athletes that you know I, I, it's never been my jam to to sit on the side of a rugby field for example or go to the Olympics and strap sweaty bodies up and that sort Somehow of thing. Oh, I can't see you doing that. <laughs> yeah, but I've you know I've I've found this amazing group of humans now who are you know deeply feeling people that are perturbed by the world around them and they're trying to fit in and they're trying to fit into this hustle culture of like working Mm. harder and playing harder and the no pain no gain and that is utter bs Mm -hmm. so i'm yeah i'm all about helping people feel better in their bodies and just accept where they're at you know and what their bodies are capable of pushing when they pushing when they want to Mm -hmm. and feel that they can but resting into their own bodies and what they want to do with it and um yeah yeah, hundred yeah. percent. I think uh, like what you said there is, you know, it's it reminds me of that phrase. You know, it's all about balance. It's all about balance. Like it's fine to work hard and play hard sometimes, as long as you're, you know, finding that balance within yourself. Because at the end of the day, you're a human. Your body has needs. Your mind has needs. And if you aren't giving it what it needs, you're not going to be able to to perform at a really high level or at a level that aligns with your values and what you want out of your business. So. No, I think that's oh, that's absolutely awesome. And I'm so glad that you mentioned trusting yourself, especially for those who are early on in their business, because when you're early on, 
you know, I don't, I don't know about you, but when I was early on in my business, I was like, I've, I've been doing this for very long. I'm not, I shouldn't be charging this or I shouldn't be saying that, blah, 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 blah. And we all do it. We all do it in the beginning. We're all guilty of it. But really, really, truly, truly, if you're listening now and you are in the early stages of your business or not in the early stages of your business, trust yourself. You have a lot more value to bring to the world than you realize you impact people's lives in far more ways than you can ever imagine or ever know because you will every time you and I know Lauren will agree with me here every time you show up online every time you send an email there'll be someone that you impact and you just don't know about it right there will absolutely be people people like that so don't forget to never stop trusting in yourself all right, Lauren, well, we are going to wrap it up there for today. Thank you so much for being on the show. If people do want to get in touch with you and chat more about either myotherapy or feminine embodiment coaching, how can they do that? Oh, well, they can find me on Instagram or Facebook. So that is Lauren Prudhoe um, with an underscore, I believe, Lauren <laughs> underscore Prudhoe. <laughs> Awesome, awesome. Well, I will pop all your links uh, down below anyway. So if anyone does want to get touch, in touch with Lauren, please be sure to check out her links and go and follow her on her pages. I hope that this episode has given you some insight into some of the things to keep in mind as you grow your business and also the importance of feeling your feelings, really experiencing them, giving yourself the space to experience them so that you can grow as a person, which is ultimately going to benefit you in so many ways, both in your business and in life. Now, if you did enjoy this episode, please subscribe and share it with someone else. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you. And you never know how it might help someone that you share it with. If you'd like even more free content, then I'd love to invite you to join my free Facebook group, The Pricing on the Cake. It's a beautiful and bustling community of women who, like you, are growing their business and themselves. If you do want to get in touch with me personally, you can send me an email to admin at And as always, I hope you have a fabulous day. Bye-bye.